want you to be uh, on like uh, on call. All right. So, okay. Yeah. So, the browser. We wanted to see what we could do with browser API. Uh, basically, visualizing blockchain identity in the browser as a key service. Um, it made up a few areas that we, you know, we we felt there was right for standardization. Um, one was creating a new API or updating an existing API uh, for auth. So maybe an extension to the web auth spec that would allow the browser to understand a blockchain-based identity and do the signings necessary uh, to log you into sites. Secondly, we wanted to resolve and display blockchain identities um, in the browser so you could view people, objects, devices, anything that was defined as an identity on the blockchain. Um, imagine opening a tab on a browser and typing in like at you know, your name.id or some device you have.iot and actually seeing a, a page, a Chrome page, um, that displays the, the output. So it's kind of like a profile of that, of that identity. And then also adding DOM APIs for interacting with identities. So the idea that if someone has an identity and signs a site into agency with it, like Twitter or something like that, um, putting some DOM APIs out there to CRUD identity data that Twitter might have access to. So that's, and then also request payload signing. So that's something the browser would need to do if you want like implied authentication. Um, you would have the browser use a derivative key to sign payloads as they go out so that apps that are receiving those payloads can check that they're from the, uh, the user. So those are like the four areas um, we were interested in pursuing for standards, and that's about it. Well, first off. Everybody likes clapping. Um, isn't that fun? Uh, have those been recorded up there? Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, well, I guess, are there any questions? Oh, yeah. Questions. Okay, Manu, up next. All right, so our group uh, got together and talked about uh, blockchain standardization proposals. So these are actual proposals to kind of start work uh, at W3C uh, or IETF with a focus, of course, on W3C. Um, I'm going to kind of list the proposals. We're going to write each one of the proposals up here for the dot voting segment. Um, but we talked about, uh, and these are in priority order. So these are in loose priority order. These are the things that were people were most interested in to like not as interested in. So blockchain receipts was up there at the top. Uh, IPLD, um, semantic vocabularies and ontologies uh, for blockchain. Uh, we also discussed that. Um, folks felt like we need a blockchain interest group at W3C to kind of uh, steer this work. Um, there was a discussion around smarter signatures, but I think Christopher and Peter are going to uh, take that stuff up. Um, digital assets, so expressing digital assets on decentralized systems. Um, something called libp2p, which is interfaces for peer-to-peer -peer protocols, network transports, peer discovery, things like that. Uh, a URI format for different blockchain networks, um, key management in the browser, so cryptographic key management in the browser, uh, how do you do proof of existence, so a standard to do that, generalized light client header proofs, um, ways of expressing and using hierarchical deterministic keys, um, the multi-formats from uh, IPFS, multi-hash, multi-stream, multi-codec, uh, multi-adder, um, there was discussion around exposing core network primitives uh, in the browser, like access to UDP or Bluetooth uh, or NFC. Um, and then there was a proposal for a blockchain gateway interface. Um, so next steps are we're putting these proposals up here, and based on the dot voting, that'll give us some idea of the priority uh, that folks would like to assign to them. Okay, any questions? Uh, did anyone actually listen or everyone's on their phones and laptops? Okay, great. So I'm gonna... Thanks. So Manu, just, you know, I could make this comment about several of the priorities, but you have key management in the browser. Um, this would, I think, be the fourth attempt that W3C has tried to do that, right? So what are we going to do different this time? 
I don't know. <laughs> I, it, more seriously, I, I think it's there's a, a more pressure now on, on key management. We've got other systems that we're trying to integrate with, and the question is, is that going to be, is that going to change anything? I don't think there was a concrete proposal around what was different. It was just a, we would like to have that discussion again. The field has changed. Good question. Any more? Okay. So... Next, uh, Christopher, did you have anything? OK. Uh, yes, uh, our table was uh, considering, the, I guess, some of the legal um, implications. Uh, and the proposition that we considered was uh, legal docs, uh, consider them as we do open source software or source code, um, you know, systematic doc at a time. And we discussed a, a couple of different things, specifically mostly what some of our challenges have been around. Um, you know, the blockchain is a communications channel. How do you legally secure that open communication if you're talking about transactions? Um, there's no real legal framework that's been established as of yet. Um, for example, our friend here from China is working with the Chinese bank. They're extremely conservative. They want to make sure that whatever is that's going on is regulated and it's governed appropriately. Uh, myself, um, working at uh, university, you know, we're not able to leverage similar knowledge with similar situated, situated institutions. So. Our Office of General Counsel is swamped using anachronistic methods. So the, the key takeaways for us were, sorry, I have 12 pages of notes. I, I'm looking is at you. Is that a legal pad? <laughs> it is no, now. He, he's in uh, education. I'm looking at Martin. You know? I'm getting very scared because I'm running out of time. Yeah. Um, so we were looking at some next steps. I think uh, looking at Common Accord, for example, to uh, as the core of a solution, or at least the beginnings of a solution, um, you know, coming up with a common record format. Uh, we talked about, quote unquote, page rank for transactions. In other words, if you're dealing with audits, it'd be nice to have the address of that transaction have some sort of weight average that may contain identity, contain centrality, the value, and the amount. We also came up with the issue of standards. There's all kinds that exist today that don't, uh, there's all kinds that don't exist that ought to. Uh, our friend uh, Eric uh, suggests that also brought up that the ISO is uh, Recently looked at the ISO TSP 258, which is uh, the ISO is looking to see if they need to get involved in some of this blockchain stuff. Uh, they're right now uh, looking at the, a 50% vote to go ahead and greater than five countries to begin. That proposal is open right now, and it looks it's got a July 14th end date for responses. That's it. Comments, questions, concerns? Up on the board? Is anything shortly? <laughs> uh, my name is Peter. I'm from Boston College. So I was hoping you could expand more on this page rank for transactions. It sounded interesting, but also very confusing. So <laughs> what is this? Well, it's the notion of uh, centrality, I think, of the transaction. Um, Monty, can uh, you elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, so, so blockchain has uh, addresses and uh, we are connecting addresses with the transaction. Transaction can be the uh, relationship line between the addresses. So we are able to calculate the centrality so up to the second depth. So if uh, the address has a connection to the weighted address, then we are able to add more weight. That can be part of the uh, the score of the uh, the address, and also we are able to calculate the size of amount and distances from the genesis uh, uh, chains, and also the change of uh, the ratio of changes of the amount. So that can be the con calculable the fact, and uh, maybe the uh, we don't know who owned the address, but. Uh, at the auditable uh, or the regulator, they are able to screen, uh, screen which address has uh, importance, and we are. That is the, the my uh, thinking. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Um, thank you again. Who's next? Okay, Christopher, we'll talk about smart. Well, so we, our table brought together. Um, uh, Interledger's crypto conditions and uh, Peter Todd's and my smarter signatures slash decks. Um, the main thing that we settled at the end of the discussion was that they're very compatible. 
that we ought to make them work together. So we got some some additional requirements from crypto conditions that we will try to resolve with uh, Dex and have a single uh, approach to it. There's some discussion about uh, bringing it uh, to ITF um, in July. Uh, so maybe I will be going to Berlin after all um, to see if there's interest there. And if there's not, we may bring it to W3C. Uh, what was the discussion about? Uh, well, I mean, crypto conditions is more of a structure as opposed to DEX, which is more of a, of a language in a sense, a very simple language. And uh, could we uh, get a number of the different types of things uh, that crypto conditions did in the structure, including a bit mask in the beginning that kind of let you know, oh, there's an RSA operation here in here. Do you support RSA? You know, there is a ECDSA operation here. Do you support ECDSA? Do you support Bitcoin curve or whatever? So those kinds of things could be prepended to the, the structure that allowed an evaluator to go, I don't even want to touch this. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 whereas DEX, you'd have to actually evaluate it to determine whether or not there were things in it that you might not understand. So uh, um, uh, we're working out how to do that. I see you're a bit blank. Yes. Uh, did uh, this, uh, any more questions? Do you feel like uh, you know what the discussion was about? Uh, at that table? Nods, twinkles, whatever. Okay. Next, uh, the security team. Right. So um, we had a small committee uh, at the security table. Um, but we, uh, we had a discussion that uh, started with um, the level of uh, research and how mature this is. Uh, and uh, how does that reflect in the implementation level? <clears throat> and the fact that, uh, okay, for some blockchains, if the functionality is very reduced, uh, we were doing okay, but um, this is no longer the case. Um, there was a discussion on DAO, and uh, the, uh, the issues that came up in the, that use case, the, the governance um, and the implementation that could have been, um, uh, could have been uh, implemented up front. Um, separation of the hash and execution, so splitting the different parts to, so as to make them um, auditable uh, and, and make more um, hardened and make them uh, yeah more secure. Um, and um, the the expectation, so understanding what the, the risk is when you uh, execute something, so have a, some sort of measure. <clears throat> and, and then we, um, we went back to uh, Matsuo's slide, I don't know if you remember it. It had um, different uh, levels of the stack, and it had uh, the standards that uh, you should apply to those stacks. Um, so it was a great slide, so we just uh, discussed around that. Uh, so it had uh, <clears throat> the uh, different, um, the stack level had operation and implementation, and then more fundamental uh, Stacks, which is the application and the cryptography, and uh, we uh, the associated proto um, uh, ISO standards uh, around um, the uh, security, the protocols, the privacy, and uh, the policy and auditability. So all these things we we didn't exactly know uh, how how to make sure that uh, you had something that was safe. How do you prove that your stack is actually secure? And so the outcome of the discussion was that um, <clears throat> we need to be able to uh, have the, some implementation layer that uh, can be pen tested, and uh, the cryptography can be uh, can can be evaluated uh, so that we have uh, an assurance that the code is secure. And um, we need more research to to do a fine grains because right now uh, we we discussed that that the part of the stack is too compact, so there is no uh, no way to uh, evaluate that clearly. So fine grade uh, layering of the security stack. <clears throat> and uh, finally, um, looking at uh, coming from the, uh, the cloud uh, world, uh, we have um, uh, an organization like the Cloud Security Alliance. And what that gives us essentially is uh, best practice in terms of security. And we couldn't find an equivalent in the blockchain and um, so we thought it would be great 
uh, if there was an initiative like that that would allow us to understand uh, the, the way to implement security from day one. Great. Did you put that on the board? Uh, You're supposed I to didn't. put... Okay. Um, it would be good to put the outcome or the action points sure. on the board so that people can vote for it. Okay. Uh, and uh, I assume that now you're setting up this uh, organization that you talked about. <laughs> we'll find the right people in the room, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so if anyone wants to set up another organization, <laughs> go to this guy. Uh, any more questions? Joey, you take care. Okay. Uh, next, uh, IoT. Uh, I'm right here. So I'll uh, net out uh, the next steps and then uh, Dr. Adrian will give some uh, highlights from the discussion. The three, four uh, next steps that came to our, our mind, one of them actually overlaps a little bit from the, from the feedback we received yesterday. One is, um, it's pretty clear there isn't a very good categorization of devices. There's a body of work that needs to be done to categorize the devices. And there are probably multiple dimensions on how to possibly do it. Um, one could be by footprint and capability kind of size. Other could be by <clears throat> mobile versus fixed server kind of thing. Third could be by longevity, which is something I alluded to in my slides. Could be by ownership, could be by spatial, temporal kind of dimensions. So there are various ways to cut and you know, slice and dice this. And I think that's a really important body of work that has to be done. Second one is, um, Broadly, fra broadly phrased, basically, the integrity of devices and rapid transactions from a user interf interface perspective. Um, the, the vision is that transactions would be happening very rapidly, and how does the user keep control for stuff that needs to be you know, overridden or um, reconfigured? Third thing is, uh, these are some of the keywords that came up in the discussions, uh, not all exhaustive. Uh, and that is about indexing, declaring, making data about the device available in a standardized manner. I think that's another really important body of work, which is just missing. Okay. And then the last thing is a little bit related, and that is the whole area of discovery of a device, addressing a device, directory services. You know, what's the equivalent of DNS and LDAP for the IoT world? registration or device, and you can extend that to provisioning and all that. So you begin to look at it from a life cycle kind of standpoint. I think those are like two or three important bodies of work uh, to be done. Adrian? So uh, I'll just rattle off a few of the uh, uh, sentiments that were expressed. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, what's uh, unnecessary centralization? You know, uh, what's the right amount of centralization when it comes to devices? Another one is that identity is separate from reputation. Or, or, or trust. So that, uh, uh, again, different categories of devices would, uh, would change that. Um, another one was uh, uh, delegation, the concept that in order for things to scale, you, there has to be built into this the ability to deal with a lot more devices than we might want to deal with on a one-by-one -one individual basis. Um, Avoiding or uh, considering surveillance as these things uh, are out there uh, and uh, all the characteristics we mentioned. Um, and uh, pretty much, uh, I think uh, that was kind of like the overview of sentiments that, uh, that were expressed. Lovely. Thank you. And uh, on board? Okay, uh, questions, comments? Okay, uh, thank you again. You? I guess you're the final report back, so. Did everyone report back, all of the groups? Yep, okay, so. Okay, we were sort of initially the table with uh, the crypto conditions, and it was sort of really two different things, so we split up. Um, we talked about 
uh, interoperability, sort of interledger lightning network protocols, uh, and how these sort of networks on top of blockchains would look. Um, and it was, it was pretty interesting, you know, very different perspectives. And, you know, I know there's some people from the sort of crypto Bitcoin blockchain side, and then all other people at the table had experience with traditional financial institutions. And there's a lot of similarities and some differences. And so we're sort of like, oh yeah, that, we have that problem too. You know, this is how we were dealing with it. Um, so a lot of what we were talking about is, you know, the topologies of what these networks are gonna look like. And, you know, will they become centralized? Will they look more like a star topology? Will they be like a well-distributed graph? Um, how, how do you do you do you want it to be well distributed? Sort of like, I guess in the in the web case, um, it started out with you know everyone sort of running their own little servers, and now you have you know a very sort of long tail, but it's a power law distribution where you know the top ten sites get ninety percent of the total visits and things like that. Um, and so there's you know there's reasons to look at it uh, either way, um, and then also sort of talking about okay, how do we not necessarily make standards, because I think it's a bit early for a lot of these. A lot of these projects are not standards ready in that they're not really operational yet. They're still in, in uh, development. But, um, you know, standards between ledgers, between uh, blockchains, between currencies, and also how to get uh, existing financial institutions to say, okay, well, we don't have a blockchain, but we will accept some of the same crypto conditions, essentially that the blockchain may have to, okay, we'll, we'll move dollars from this account to that account if you provide this digital signature or something like that. And if you can get banks and other institutions to work on that, then you can sort of integrate even more uh, than the, the existing blockchains. Um, what were next steps and points like that? We, it, it's, I think it's sort of still a bit early to say like, okay, we need to make a standards committee and do all this. Um, but, but there's a lot of con you know, ideas of, okay, how can companies use this for risk, risk management? And uh, how can we the legal aspects of this work too? Uh, so it's you know good conversation, definitely stuff to keep talking about. Um, I don't know if it's do you really have a it yet. anywhere summarized, uh, accessible something? If it was a good discussion, we would like to know. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's sort of a, a lot of it was just talking about how this could potentially work, and it's still pretty early, I think. Um, so just as a first, I have a question. Sure, sure. Um, uh, you say it's not ready for standardization. Is it ready for something? Would incubation help? Is it still in the phase where you just have a, a project that you need to work on? Or is it maybe to the point where starting a community group or starting a conversation like that might be a step towards, who knows, maybe two years, whatever, yeah, four I, years, whatever it is down the line. Yes, so think, that's also something up here. And we can okay. prioritize things mm -hmm. uh, based on their urgency and, and their readiness. But we can also be thinking longer term, how does this fit into the larger yeah. thing? I think standardization is really important. And a lot of it now is just, OK, here's how what we're working on works. And here's how what they're working on works. So we can all see how it, it all works and stuff. So a lot of it, education. Okay. Uh, sorry, as an admin note, uh, if you want to give us the any of the papers that you have that people have written notes on, if you don't want to keep them, give them to us, and we'll try to record them. We will record them yes we'll take a photograph of them um i uh my my question is i thought it was very important that you you said that you didn't think some of this was ready and so doug had one part of the follow-up which was oh well what would be ready i'd be very interested to hear your sense because you're definitely in the middle of it at your company w w what are the aspects that you it seemed like they're not ready yet because that's imminent as we develop this list it's easy for me anyway to get all caught up in it and start kind of moving forward with momentum, but what are the signs that, that make you feel it's not ready so we can take that into account? Uh, sorry. I think it was sort of the idea of you want things that are operational and you want sort of a descriptive rather than prescriptive standard. It seemed like, I mean, I'm not a WC3 experienced person, but it seems like that's sort of the idea. And so a lot of these are technologies that are not currently being used widely. Um, and so we're, you know, people are talking to companies, people are building things, um, but we don't really know what the network's gonna look like uh, yet. So, so that's why it's sort of like, let's see how it works in real life and then look at it. 
Cool. Um, I just had to take a moment to plug. Uh, we actually do have a W3C community group focused on Interledger, and we're talking about a lot of these things on there. So if you all are interested in these types of protocols, I would encourage you to join that group because we, we're very much interested in using the W3C structure to kind of organize that community. Any more questions? Okay, uh, so I think that's all of the report backs. Uh, now, let's clap. clap. And now, after we finish clapping, I would ask every single person to grab a box, a bottle, a box and a bottle, or whatever you have around yourself. If your box has chips or cookie, Take them out and put them on the table and bring all of that to the trash so that the tables are nice and clean and we can actually work, okay? Jeff, I'm also looking at you. Okay, well then take out the food and put the box away. I'm still seeing empty bottles on the table, so they should disappear. You are awesome. Manu, you can, Manu, you can keep your box. <laughs> no, 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 I, I saw when you came with <laughs> Yeah, we are, but we're having a session. So we're going to have a, a break for a few minutes, and then when we come back, we're going to be doing the dot voting. And please make sure that the tables are really clean. So, like, if there are bottles and so on, just clean them out. We are adults, seriously. Thank you. 
So, everybody, while you are milling about, feel free to come up here. Look to see if everything that you're interested, or if something that you're interested in is represented up here. If it's not, go ahead and, and make one. And um, we will be handing out some stickers in a moment. Everybody likes to play with stickers. And uh, uh, are we ready to? Does anybody have? Something that, that, that is not on the wall that they definitely think needs to be like a working group or a major project that's a collaboration uh, that that you know maybe was discussed on a pre okay start over again is there this is your last chance to get something on the wall and what should go on the wall is like a major project a potential working group activity or you know something that maybe we talked about yesterday but somehow didn't come out of the discussions today that are deserving of group effort group collaboration so we want to make sure that we're not missing a few um, uh, one thing, yeah, so if you think you've got one, come up here, look at the ones that are on the wall, make sure that it isn't a duplicate, and then write one up. Do you have, we have like five minutes. We're starting to lose a lot of people. Yeah. I think I'll never Yeah. Because to some extent, it, because you were the, the boss and you were my person. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 